rainbows and welcome back to another episode of the royal family this is season 2 episode 73 and before we begin we need to go over some story posts I also want to let you guys know in case you missed it that there is a episode that came out before this episode that was a half episode so it was episode 72 and a half and it's the reveal about Dean's affair Prince Dean's affair so if you haven't seen that it is on my royal family season 2 playlist but it is also linked in the video description below so you can click there definitely go watch it if you have not seen it because there are going to be spoilers if you have not seen it yet and there are also going to be spoilers if you haven't read the story posts either that we're about to go over so as usual those are linked in the video description below there are links for both Instagram and tumblr depending on what you want to read it on there's links for both for each post I will say that this is a very serious episode some serious stuff is gonna happen we'll get into that in just a second uh, there will be some happy stuff at the end of this though so we'll go over that later so let's just go over the story post really quickly so I went over posts number one and two in the last episode, but I will include them here just in case. Post number one was Kaleo coming home from the debutante ball, and he was furious because he saw Alice May and Caspian kissing at the ball. Post number two was Queen Leilana talking to her cousin Makai about how she suspects that Dean is having an affair. Then season two, part 72 and a half came out, and it was revealed that Dean is having an affair with Dowager Queen Evangeline. The next two posts were of Leilana confronting Dean about the affair, and it was split into two parts. Post number three was part one and post number four was part two. And we got some insight on what Leilana and Dean's marriage has been like for the past couple of years. Post number five was Alice May waking up the morning after the debutante ball. We found out that she wanted to tell her parents, Amira and Jabari, about Kaleo that morning, but Amira and Jabari weren't home. They went out of town and won't be returning till the next evening. Post number six was Caspian and Alice May having a cute picnic date. They decided that they would call each other their secret boyfriend slash girlfriend to those who know about them. We also saw them share a bit about themselves to each other. Caspian also told Alice May that when she tells her parents about Kaleo, that that he'd be happy to go and be there for her if she wanted him to for emotional support. Post number seven, Caspian and Alice May spent the rest of the day together. Alice May said that she would text Caspian later that evening. Then we saw Caspian leaving the palace and then Alice May telling Cedric that Caspian is her boyfriend now and Cedric was super happy about that. Then post number eight was Kaleo and Frederick at William's house. We saw that Frederick is still upset because he thinks Caspian was trying to flirt with Jessica at the debutante ball, because that's what Kaleo told him. And Kaleo kept making things up about Caspian, saying that he's interested in a lot of girls, whether they're in a relationship or not. He's saying this to get William and Frederick to hate Caspian too, and it's working. And then since William's house is right next to the Windenburg Palace, the three of them look out the window and see Caspian leaving the palace. And William says to Frederick that if he wants Caspian gone, now is his chance to try and talk to him. But Frederick is like, I don't know what to say. And Kaleo, of course, is the one who hates Caspian the most. And he tells them, stay here. I'll take care of it. And he leaves Williams to go confront Caspian outside. And that is it for all the story posts. Now, you all are about to see the machinima for this episode. Please know before I show it to you guys that there is a content warning for violence and images of blood. And you guys are about to see the content warning anyway, but I just wanna let you guys know because this is the most violent machinima that I've done in the series. Do not feel like you guys have to watch it. If you're sensitive to that stuff, that is totally fine. Just skip to the time that's on the screen right now and it will bring you to the part in the video that takes place right after the machinima. And I'll just give you guys a summary of what happened if you if you don't wanna see it. So I will go ahead and play the machinima for you guys, get ready for a lot of teenage angst, and let's go ahead and begin the episode.
Hey guys, welcome back. I feel like the royal family theme song is very much needed to just lighten up the mood after this machinima. So if you didn't see it, if you skipped ahead, we just saw that Kaleo confronted Caspian outside of William's house with Duke and uh, Duchess Kellen, sorry, Duke, Kellen, and Duchess Meghan's house, which is right next to the royal family of Windenburg's palace. Kaleo was trying to do anything he can to stop Caspian from seeing Alice May, was trying to convince him, was trying to insult him, wasn't working on Caspian. And then Kaleo snapped and lost his temper. And then he beat the crap out of Caspian. Caspian's okay. I should say that Caspian, I mean, obviously he's hurt, but he's, he's, alive. And Caspian might not have hit him anyway because of Kaleo being a prince. He's basically untouchable. But he also didn't dodge or anything because Kaleo attacked him when Caspian's back was turned, when Caspian had his earphones in. He was listening to music and he couldn't hear Kaleo approaching him. By the way, thank you to one of my moderators, Ash, Phantom Angel. She's the one who I commissioned to do the animation of the earphones, like putting the in. So thank you, Ash. I will link Ash's Patreon in the video description below. She does poses, animations, recolors, and all that stuff. So definitely go ahead and check her out. But yes, Caspian had his earphones in. Couldn't hear Cleo. His phone was shattered. Caspian's phone is shattered. So it's broken. Caspian did go home. He ended up being able to go home. But if you remember from a story post before the debutante ball that his mother Nia isn't home. She's out of town for the week. She's visiting her parents and helping them move. So Caspian's the only one home. But we're gonna see, we're gonna see story posts of this, but he tried to make it back home. I, he hurt himself a little bit more by doing so, trying to make it back home. But now, um, well, okay, so Kellen and Megan are current. Oh, we never see them though. I probably should have had them here so you guys could see them. But Kellen and Megan, they're currently volunteering somewhere. I think they're at the soup kitchen, yeah. Okay, so now, if you guys saw in the machinima, Kale okay, so Kaleo has gotten back. There's gonna be a story post about this, by the way, but I wanna like play it through with you guys a little bit, but um, so Kaleo has just gotten back. And if you saw in the machinima, oh, you know what? I even, wait, feeling confident, oh no. I even like had Caspian and Kaleo get into a fight in my game, which took, it was a very long fight. I don't know why, but he had the mood. I I like did it specifically so he would have the moodlet that he won the fight and now it's gone. <laughs> so that's fine. It did not last long at all. But anyway, okay, so in the machinima we saw, this is some custom content that I have, but um, that he beat, this, I'm sorry, this, I hope this doesn't make anyone uncomfortable. I probably should have put a warning for this too. I'm just like kind of explaining what happened, but I prom it's important to the story. That's why I'm mentioning it. I just know some people can be sensitive about this stuff and I totally understand, but um, this is just from Kaleo's from his hands from beating up Caspian. So he has these on his hands. So I imagine that he got back to the pal, or not, sorry, not the palace. I imagine that he got back to Williams and they see this and they know that Kaleo just went outside to go talk to Caspian. But I feel like if they saw this, they would be like, um, what the heck is that? So I'm gonna have them start. I, w w hmm, would Frederick call him out for, I don't know, they would both call him out, I think. Oh, there's not like a call out. Call him out on something. Argue, argue about humor, no. <laughs> okay, well, fine, we'll, we'll just yell at him. We'll have Frederick yell at him and we'll have William start yelling at him too. They're basically just calling him out. Again, I'm gonna have a story post on this, so we'll see it anyway, but I am having them call him out because they're seeing this, like they're seeing his hands and like, yeah, I mean, what else would that be? They would immediately know that he did something to Caspian. So they're calling him out on it and being like, what the heck did you do? But I think Kaleo would immediately start manipulating Frederick and William and be like, you guys wanted this too. Like you guys wanted him gone. I did you guys a favor. So I'm gonna have Kaleo yell back at Frederick and William because like Frederick still thinks that Caspian was, I mean, you guys saw, he still thinks that Caspian was trying to flirt with Jessica. And Kaleo is lying to him to tell him that because he, he knows that if he didn't do 
something to try to turn Frederick against Caspian that Frederick would be against what Kaleo is doing. I mean, he's, he is against it. They're not okay with this, but Kaleo is a really good liar. And then, and William doesn't like Caspian either. But there was this whole thing. I mean, this happened so long ago. So I, I know the story has been going on for a while. So I understand if you guys don't remember, but William didn't like Caspian because he thinks that Caspian's a bad influence on Alice May and on Cedric. And obviously Kaleo's opinions have gotten to him too. Cause the boys, are, the boys are closer to each other. I mean, obviously it's like the whole group of friends too, but like William and Frederick don't talk to, like they don't have deep conversations necessarily with Alice May. They don't usually tell each other, like they they don't go to each other to tell each other personal things. Even though William and Alice May, they're cousins, but William is closer, a lot closer to Kaleo. But I do, oh, <laughs> Frederick's giving Kaleo the hand, but Oh my, I always find it funny when the animations are like very in sync, but Kaleo is like turning it around on them and saying like he's he's doing them a favor by getting rid of Caspian. Like they wanted Caspian gone too. And I, I feel like Frederick and William would kind of start to back down a bit because of it for now at least. But like, I, I'm sure the guilt is gonna get to them. I mean, like I'm even, I keep trying to make them argue and fight, but they they just end up calming down. So I, I mean, William and Frederick, they're they're not like, they don't like confrontation all that much. They're not very argumentative. Like even William was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I promise it'll be a lot more clear in the story post. You guys will see, you guys will see what happens. But to summarize things, Kaleo has turned the situation back around on them, telling his friends that he did them a favor to the point where they're like second guessing, even though their conscious knows how wrong this is. And like Kaleo's probably trying to reassure him that like Caspian's fine, but like, we're not gonna have to worry about him anymore. But I think we will see the guilt start to catch up with Frederick and William. William, they're literally, they're literally just sitting here now after I had them argue, like usually they just keep going. So yeah, we will see more about this. I also want to talk about the affair with uh, Dean and Leilana, that whole situation briefly. So we aren't going to see them in this episode. We will see more about it. So these stories, like, so we have Alice May's story, like and the whole situation with Cleo and Caspian and all of them going on with the teens going on. And then we have the situation with Cleo's parents, with Dean and Leilana and Evangeline and all of them. So they're gonna uh we'll see both sides we will see evangeline's side but it won't be until after the next episode we still have some stuff to get through first mostly because this is all happening within like a day of each other can you guys do something please but this is all happening within a day of each other like this is the day after the debut ball we had the whole thing with alice may and caspian they hung out they did their like they had their little picnic day and then leilana found out about dean and evangeline and then this is all happening at night caspian literally just left so this is the last thing that happens the Saturday after the ball. We are now, we're gonna go to Sunday, but we are go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what was gonna happen later in the episode. So the happy stuff that's gonna happen, um, Zayori's gonna age up. She's gonna age up to a child, which I don't think I'm ready for, but it's gonna happen. And Manuel and Julia are gonna have their baby. So we're gonna go to that next. That'll be, uh, that'll be the Sunday. But we have like a ton of stuff that's gonna happen on that Sunday as well, that we will see in story post and in the next episode. In the next episode might be something that I think a lot of people have been aware waiting to happen with the teens. I'm excited for you guys to see. Um, so Kaleo has no idea what's going on with his parents. Um, none of the kids know Makana and Samaria and Bellatrix, they don't know either. And of course we know how awful this whole situation is for Samaria and Bellatrix because it's Samaria's dad and Bellatrix's mother. It's also Kaleo's dad and Alice Bay's step-grandmother too. It's just a very messy, messy, messy situation. But yeah, again, we'll see Evangeline's side of things. And I, I know some people were like very shocked by it. I know, I think some people forgot Evangeline existed. Um, I did pin this in the last episode, but Evangeline and Dean are actually the same exact age. Evangeline's only like, I always imagine she's probably only like five years older than Amira. So she was a lot younger than Henry, Amira's father, when they got married. But her and Dean are like the same exact age. Dean's a good amount older than Leilana, uh, and Leilana is younger than Amira. So yeah, but we, we will definitely see more about the affair later. But yeah, so I think that's everything that's gonna happen here. Again, we'll see more in story post post and in the next episode at least you guys like kind of somewhat know what's gonna happen i wanted to like do this too and, and have what happened with william and frederick and cleo in this episode because I'm actually going to be actually as this video comes out i will be on vacation jake and i will be in florida so the story post i uh, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get it out by the time i go on vacation so if i don't then it will come after 
afterwards so like a week or so a week and a half after the episode comes out but yeah at least you guys like know that frederick and william know and alice may has no idea what's going on i mean caspian doesn't have his phone caspian's mother has no idea what's going on a lot of people don't know what's going on so yeah we'll see more about this all right but now we are going to go ahead to sayori's birthday party <laughs> she's gonna age up and do a child so we'll leave the boys here they are spending the night and they are actually all going to they have plans to go to the Brindleton Bay Palace tomorrow to hang out. And as you guys know, the Sunday is also the day that Molly Grace and Alice May are supposed to hang out and Alice May is supposed to tell her everything with Kaleo. And they don't know that Frederick and Kaleo and William are all supposed to go to the Brindleton Bay Palace. We will see Nani and Jessica there too because Alice May would also want to tell them about what's going on as well. So there's going to be a lot of miscommunication going on. So yeah, we'll see that all later. All right, happy stuff now. So we are now at the Guangxi Palace. I feel like this is needed. Uh, oh well, okay, happy, but also I don't want this to happen. I know some people want Sayori to age up and some people don't. I don't. I, I just, she's so cute as a baby. She's so cute. She's been a tall, I think it's like what, like a year now? It's been a year, like literally real time a year, I think, since they had her. So I know it's been a long time. Ages are just like, uh, the sins are aging up a lot slower while I'm focusing on, uh, well, while I'm focusing on Alice May's story. This will happen when I get detailed into stories. I've, I've mentioned this before and we're like getting, we're like getting closer to the climax of her story, so it's like almost halfway through. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, all right, now it's Sayori's birthday party. Uh, oh, she's talking to her uncle. I feel like Akio has like a super soft spot for this Akio. This is Han's older brother. And for those who knew Han and Aramid destroy before, you know that their relationship was not good before. Han and Akio's relationship was not good before. They've sort of made things up, like Akio realized what he did and all that stuff. And we'll get more into it later on when we get to Zayori's story. That's his sister and Han's sister, Tai. And that's also Shen's mother. But we'll get into it later on. But I do think he has a soft spot for Zayori. Um, that's John, by the way. So I have the Willow Creek royal family here. So this is John, this is Genevieve, Eve's boyfriend. They're still traveling, still waiting until they've like seen the world before they want to get married. He's like in this screen, but that's fine. But yeah, anyway, I, I just was talking about the Akio and Sayori thing because I saw Sayori talking to Akio. But now we have Rin and Sayori, who's not going to be a toddler after this anymore. And it makes me so sad. She's so cute. I'm sorry. I talk about how cute she is all the time. Anyway, this is Rin. They're chatting. They're talking. They're like best friends. It's so cute. And then we have Mamie, who I who should be in the regular, oh, whoops. Um, Mamie should change, okay. <laughs> She's still in the smaller toddler preset. Also, I definitely recolored her hair to be black and not blue, but it has a mind of its own and keeps switching back. But she should be changing into the regular toddler size soon. I just, um, I, I don't, I just want like there to be a slight difference in size between her and Rin, but I'll, I'll change her in the regular size soon. But uh, you guys haven't seen him yet. So this is Prince Kaito, which is Akio and Azumi youngest, oh sorry, not youngest, oldest son. He's just a little bit older than Zayori, so he would have been a, a kid by now, so he's a kid now. And then this is his youngest brother, Yuzuru, so this is a Kyo and Azumi's youngest son. And then of course we have Araminta and we have Azumi. This is Azumi, this is Akio's wife. Azumi and Araminta get along fairly well. And then we have Araminta's side of the family. So that, that was mostly Han's side of the family. And then we have the Willow Creek Royal family here because they're, they were fairly close with the Guangxi Royal family. If you guys, if you have seen the Rum of Magic miniseries that I had with Queen Corinne. And Corinne's not a spellcaster anymore, but she had her own miniseries. And that's when she was staying at the Guangxi royal family and there was that whole situation. So I can link it below if you do want to see it, if you haven't seen it yet. But point is that the Guangxi royal family and Willow Creek royal family are fairly close. Also, Takashi and Elena are married too, so there's that as well. Um, and the Willow Creek Royal family, they love Araminta. When Takashi had to apologize for uh, being in Cornelius's bed that one time, um, he asked Araminta to go with him. He asked his sister to go with him because Elena's parents love Araminta. So he's like, okay, please help me out. Just be there and maybe this will be easier. So that kind of thing. But yeah, Cornelius is here. Alice is here. We saw them before. I don't know where he went now. Now they are getting closer to being ready to be parents. So I mentioned before that they are considering talking to like a distant relative of Ellis to be an egg donor and then having a surrogate, which I will use a mod for. I've heard there's a mod for that. So the donor and 
surrogate are different people because I think they would hire a professional surrogate to carry the future heir of Willow Creek. I mean, like heir after Cornelius. That'll be in a couple episodes. And then there will be more couples having babies soon too. And then this right here. So this is Araminta and Takashi's stepfather, Duke Kentaro. Their mother should be here somewhere. I don't know where. You know what? We should probably call people to the meal too. Call to meal. And then this is Araminta and Takashi's stepsister, Vanna's son. <laughs> um, a reminder that there's a wiki page page for the series so if you need to look up any characters because I always like go through the characters and like relations and stuff at events but I know a lot of people probably have no idea what I'm talking about so if you need to check there is a wiki page linked in the description below for you to check if you are curious about any characters and it says like who they're related to and all that stuff and a little bit um, of description about them as well but this is Lord Sota so he is the Baroness's and Baron Consort's son of Guangxi so that's Baroness Fana and Baron Consort Connor, who should also be here somewhere, but I don't see him. And that is this Manuel? It is. All right, so Manuel and Juliet are here. I'm wondering if she should just go into labor here. <laughs> just cause like they're already here. So I feel like we might as well. I don't know where Juliet is. I just see Manuel, but he's on the computer. I don't know if him and Akio would have that much to talk about, but they're in the same room. Oh, I don't see Takashi or Elena. They were invited, hello. Oh, this is, oh, this is Lady Harper. So this is Araminta and Takashi's oldest stepbrother's wife. So that's Lord Makara. He's the future Duke of Guangxi and they don't have kids. I might, like, I, I was trying not to have a lot of the other families that we don't play have kids because I was trying to lower the sim count because we have way too many sims and my computer was starting to act up because of it. But I might like, <laughs> we might just see couples have kids who didn't have kids before. Like I might just give them kids and like have them be older because I know for like Cedric's age group, there's not a lot of kids there. So I might just like add children occasionally, just a heads up, just so you're not like, wait, what the heck? But yeah, I don't know where the others are. I'm wondering, maybe we should just go ahead and age up Sayori and then hopefully everyone else will get here. Oh, this is Admiral Jiang. This is Tai's husband and Shen's father. So we saw Shen at the debutante ball and Shen should also be here. I don't know where he is. I also hired a bartender the bartender never gets here on time. Oh, also, uh, so I know I got this palace like a long time ago. Um, it's not done being furnished yet. I, it's, I'm sorry, it hasn't been a priority of mine because we're not here a lot yet. We will be when it's Iori's story, but right now the main focus is Windenburg. But I have the essentials in the Guangxi palace. I just like, I mean, because you guys know, like, because uh, I've been struggling with the chronic pain and stuff, like carpal tunnel syndrome and my back problems and stuff. So I can't, I can't like be on the computer for that long. So I, we, we've been working on this a bit on the streams. We'll finish it eventually, but I have the essentials. They have bedrooms, they have bed. Well, not everyone has their own bedroom, but I have the nursery and then beds. We finished Sayori's bedroom. This is Sayori's bedroom. So she will move into here now because she'll be turning into a kid. So this will be hers now. Although I think she will still want her sisters to have sleepovers with her because I feel like that's going to be really hard for them to like not share a room anymore, like not be in the nursery together anymore. But yeah, this is Sayori's room. Han and Araminta, I mean, they have their bedroom. I have the unfinished version. Oh, their bedroom's actually not done completely, but they have a bed. So that's important. I have like the unfinished version on my gallery. My gallery ID is in the description below, but I, I will upload it when I'm done. I know people have asked if it's uploaded yet or if it's done and I'm sorry, it's not. Anyway, cake. Okay, well, there's a bunch of food on the floor, but Sayori's gonna age up. I'm not ready for this. I don't, I'm dying. Is it too late to turn back now? All right, this is fine. Okay, um, help blow out candles. Ah, oh, Corinne's here in a crown. I don't know where exactly, but okay, ask Han to help you blow out the candles. It's gonna happen. It's happening. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm gonna do so many flashback pictures of her as a baby. I don't even care. Okay, bye baby, sorry, Ori. She's been here for a year. Oh my gosh. Okay. <sighs> so we'll see a lot more of this later, but let's say Ori is going to be really adventurous. Seek out new and unique experiences. We'll, we'll see more of her and her story and you guys will see why. But yeah, I think she's very adventurous. Loves to try new things and uh, say motor skill for her. She'll be very active. So, okay. So I'm going to pick a quick outfit for Zayori and I'll show it to you guys in just a second. 
All right, so I picked a temporary outfit for Zayori. I need to go CC shopping. I do not have enough stuff. So the hairstyle and all that's gonna change. But her skin details won't stay on, which means her heterochromia eye won't stay on. So like now, like she has one brown eye and one green eye, but it's just, they're both brown because it, it's a skin detail. It, I have Eyes on You by Marvel and I kind, I've had this issue before when they were toddlers and I saw somewhere to just put their skin details on, like it's a glitch and then put their skin details on in in their swimsuit section so I tried that and like it's still going away luckily like her face overlay is staying on but literally everything else is coming off so her hairline her nose shine her heterochromia eye so pretend one of her eyes is green the look will change but I wanted to at least show you guys her I'm so disappointed about the skin details I really hope I can try to figure that out maybe that's why also Mamie's hair just keeps turning back to blue for some reason even though I picked a different swatch but yeah that's Sayori she's a kid now I'll post a picture on Instagram once my Instagram's in the description below, but I'll post a picture. I'll, uh, sorry, I will post a picture on Instagram once I have completed her look. Uh, and yeah, like a bunch of people didn't show up. Takashi didn't show up. Elena didn't show up. They should be here. Pretend they pretend they're here. Um, none of Araminta's and or Araminta and Takashi, none of their step siblings showed up. Their mother didn't show up. I would think they would be here. Oh yeah, and Juliet's not here. Am I having to force all of them to come here? That's a lot of people. But Shen showed up. Shen is here. We saw him the debutante ball, of course. So he is the oldest out of all of his cousins by a good amount. But let's have Sayori and Shen. They can say hi to each other, ask what day. Oh, well, okay, this is one of the step siblings. This is Lord Makara, he's here. So that's the oldest of them. Maybe I could just teleport them here real quick so we can see them. We definitely need Juliet here. Let's say her water breaks during Sayori's birthday party, because why not? That's not the craziest thing we've had happen in this series. Okay, so I teleported a bunch of them here here so we can see them. So this is Baroness Vanna. This is the one that was friends with Araminta growing up and then their parents got married. So then now they're stepsisters. That's Baroness Vanna. She's so cute. I love her so much. And then this is Dowager Empress Maylin and she is Takshi and Araminta's mother. I, you, I mean, you guys know that Anya is there too, but Anya's not in the picture right now. So I don't mention her, but we'll see her one day anyway. And then of course we have Takashi, Araminta's brother. We've seen him a good amount before. And then this is Lord, oh, well, hello, sorry. Um, not Lord, sorry. This is Count Kai. And I think some people have forgotten. So Count Kai is trans. I think people forgot that he was Lady Kairi before, but he's Araminta and Takashi's youngest stepbrother. And he is the Count of Guangxi. But yeah, it's Makara, Fana, and Kai. Uh, we will see them. We'll see Han side of family, Araminta side of family, of course, more when we get into Zayori's story later on, much later on in the series, after Alice May's story is over. And then we have Elena and Juliet, and look at how pregnant Juliet is. So let's just have her go into labor at the birthday party. Oh, and also here's um, Tai, Han, and Akio's dad, Emperor Li Wei. So yes, he's still the emperor. Some people thought he had passed away. He has not, he's still alive. He will be alive for a long while too. He's got a long way to go. So that is Sayori, Rin, Mamie, all of their grandfather. So because I have to control any sim mod, I can just control Juliet and Manuel. I will link that mod in the description below. Where's Manuel? Manuel is here. Actions, control, sim. All right, Julia is in labor. They are about to have their first baby. I'm super excited. Where's Manuel? Manuel, take your wife to the hospital. Oh, well, no, well, yeah, no, take her to the hospital. Um, ask me this due date. No, it's due right now. Maybe I have to be in their household. Let me try doing that. All right, so I switched to their household and it just brought us back to their house, which is fine. I don't think you guys have seen this here. I think I've only shown this on the stream. If you're wondering, I did download this from the gallery. It's called India Oasis and the original build is by Trinity Black 68. But okay, Julia is in labor. So, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's so pregnant. All right, um, have, I guess we're going to the hospital. Have baby at hospital, send alone. Okay, so Julia and Manuel are having their first baby. Baby. Others are gonna be having babies soon. I think next to have a baby, next to be pregnant is going to be Elon and Natalia. They are trying. Um, I know I mentioned that Kimmy and Makata are gonna be having their baby in the next episode, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer um, for story reasons. I'm sorry to do this to you guys. I know you all were super excited, but yes, for story reasons, I'm going to wait a little bit longer for their baby. Probably another two or three. Ah, uh, well, hmm, I don't know how long. Cause like the 
the pregnancies and babies being born don't line up with like the story anyway. <laughs> the Sims, they have their babies so quick and we of course want to see the children. So I do rush that stuff, but I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for Kimmy and Makata's baby. To hold you guys over, I will have other couples have babies. <laughs> All right, so my Mel and Juliet had a baby girl and I'm going to go with the name Priya. So it is Lady Priya. And we will see Lady Priya. Oh, uh, she's floating, that's fine. Well, I I'll, I'll put her in the toddler preset. There will be pictures, of course, as always. Oh, and then before I forget, here is a picture of Adric and Desta and baby Osiris, who is the heir to the UKSD throne, the UKSD throne, sorry. So I, I don't think I had shown you guys him yet. So yes, this is baby Osiris. But Manuel and Juliet have had their first baby. Sayori has aged up. That's the happy stuff. Um, then we have everything going on with the teens and with Kaleo and all that stuff. So we'll get into that later, but we're gonna go ahead and end this episode here. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Again, I know this was a very violent machinima if, if you did see it, but um, again, I don't put anything in here unless it's necessary to tell the story. I think it's pretty obvious, but I'll say this anyway. I don't condone violence. Don't do this at home. It's for story purposes only. We'll see more of what's going on with that later. We'll see more about what's going on with the affair and all that stuff in Subani later, the stuff in Winnenberg, the stuff with Caspian and Alice May. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications if you have not already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.